Amen. <laughs> he can be, I can be done, amen. Uh, if you will, take your Bibles and turn to Exodus chapter 15. In case something happens, I don't get to preach again. I want to thank this church. Thank you, preacher, for the hospitality. Amen. Uh, I love your pastor. He's been, him and his wife has been um, very good friends for us for, for us several years now. And uh, years ago, um, when um, our kids were younger, I don't know if I ever told this story or not, uh, when our kids were younger years ago, uh, we had, was worried about uh, if we had both died, men and wife both died at the same time. And so, uh, so we had prayed about it at that time, and we had, the church was still a lot younger, and it uh, wasn't nothing against the church, just we wanted uh, somebody older, mature, uh, more stable, uh, with, with the same standards, pretty much the same doctrine. And we talked to our kids about it, and our kids didn't want to go to their, to their, to their lost family. Uh, they didn't care. They, it was their aunt. They didn't care about their grandmother. They, I mean, they loved them, but you know what? They just wanted to be in a, in a King James Bible-believing environment with the right spirit and right attitude. So we had prayed for a while, prayed, prayed, and we finally decided to talk to Brother Andrew and his wife about taking our kids. That's why at the last camera, and he was up there uh, uh, doing that little uh, how to spank your child, he picked horn. And he said he was going to have to do this. That's why he's made that statement was because um, we talked to him about it and um, and uh, they, they 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 prayed about it and they and they agreed to it. And we signed everything over to him. Our, my 401k, our life insurance, everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. You would have had some money. You would have had some money. You would have had a little bit of money. Amen. And we as I'm saying we put everything in his name. And, uh, and, and we was at a meeting. I don't, I don't know where we were. I don't know if it was, it was our camp meeting or another meeting we was together. And I told my kid, I said, now, now y'all need to go thank Brother Andrew for, for caring enough about I'll take y'all. And uh, my, I, I, I wasn't with him. My kids went over there. They were younger then. They went over there. And they said, we want to thank you for taking us. And he told, he said, tell your dad, don't die no time soon. <laughs> he said, please, tell your dad, don't die no time soon. <laughs> Amen. 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 Let me get going here. I'm, I'm nervous. Amen. I, I, and I meant what I said. Uh, he could have took my, my 30 minutes, amen. I was enjoying it. But uh, I guess it's just not God's will. So uh, Exodus chapter 15, uh, then verse 1, then sang the song of Moses, sang Moses, the children of Israel, this song unto the Lord and spake and saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and the rider have he thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength. My, he has become my salvation. He is my God. I will prepare him in a habitation of my father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Amen. Amen. Uh, I was going, Lord, in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for your mercy and your grace. Lord, I pray you honestly help me, Lord, stay within my time. But help me exalt you, Lord Jesus, and magnify you. And let me help me, Master. If you could just touch somebody's heart, uh, Lord, I, I would just greatly appreciate it. It would be the best birthday present of all, Master, that you've given me of all the things. Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. i, I got to read you this, this, uh, this um, history here. Uh, some of you younger kids probably have no idea what I'm talking about, except in passing. But some of you older preachers uh, know what I'm talking about. In July of 19, um, July 1914, uh, July 1914, it was the beginning of World War I. It ended in November of 1918. The U.S. joined the war in 1917 in, in a conflict a year, about six months. The victory was won. In World War II, September of 1939, uh, was started in Europe, Europe was World War II. Uh, it, it, end, um, it ended in 1945. In 19, December of 1941, the U.S. joined uh, that war, that conflict, because of Pearl Harbor. Other uh, Japanese came in there, and uh, you know, you just can't stay passive sometimes when somebody's trying to take over the world. Right. And, uh, and they came in there, and they, uh, they bombed Pearl Harbor, and the U.S. declared war on Japan, and then later declared war on Germany. Uh, it ended in 1945, but five years later, in June of 19, uh, tw uh, June 25th, 1950, uh, another war came up called the Korean War. Uh, it ended in 1953. It ended in a stalemate. Now, there's, there are reasons, there, there's some I'm going with all this. It ended in a stalemate there, and uh, then about, 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 about two years later, started another conflict. Uh, 1950, I started the Vietnam War. Out of the Vietnam War, started in 1955. 
And it ended almost two, pretty much 20 years later in 1975. In 1961, uh, the U.S. joined the conflict in the Vietnam War. From 1961 to 1975, about 14 years, uh, the conflict lasted. Now, you have to understand what happened. In 19, um, 1975, uh, the U.S. lost that war. They did. That was the first conflict in the 20th century that the U.S ever been defeated. Uh, that war ended in a total fall, or fall of uh, Saigon, the invasion of Vietnam, and it fell to the communists. Now, like I said, some of you young people, you have no idea what I'm talking about. Uh, but these older people, Joe Coley, Sam Delaney, uh, Brother Ellis, they remember that time. Uh, it was not a good time. Uh, it was a time of turmoil. It was a time of protesting. Uh, the U.S. and uh, the military suffered a great defeat. Uh, it was full of immorality at that time, drug abuse, all kinds of atrocities done on both sides of the fence. It really turned a lot of young men into animals in a lot of ways. And it was a war that a lot of people was ashamed of. Uh, it was a bad time that those, those soldiers came home to protesting. As a matter of fact, when uh, we invaded uh, Afghanistan and Iraq, George Bush Jr. was one of the main ones that pushed, um, pushed for patriotic morale to support our troops. Because no troops came back. It wasn't like World War II. They came back totally unsupported. They really did. Right. Now, there, there's a reason why I'm pointing this out, so just bear with me a little bit. And you got to understand, and, and for a lot of years, it was considered a failure. As a matter of fact, when any other military conflict came about after that, they always referred to the Vietnam War as a place of mistakes that we must learn from. I mean, literally, it, it, was, just, it was just a bad situation. Now, the reason why I point that out is because of this. In all that conflict, though, several things happened. Uh, it, it's been an argument amongst older people that each generation, the army weakens. I mean, Brother Daniel, I bet he's heard of that. Brother Woods heard of that before. Uh, they, they really believe that every generation, uh, every generation, the, the, war, um, the uh, troops, it, it just weakens. And you know what? Right. Pretty much it's the truth. Right. I mean, it really is. And then when, that, when they fought that Vietnam War, even, I mean, they, they were not the same men of World War I, World War II, or even the Korean War. They, I mean, they, their heart wasn't in it. It really wasn't. Some of them deserted. Some of them committed suicide. Some of them just playing protests, even in the army, and did their best to just be rebellious. Now you say, well, well, well what's the sense of you telling me that? Because I have to tell you something. But out of that, something did happen. Out of that, there was something called U.S. Naval Special Operations Force. It started in 1962, and it stepped out of Vietnam. You know them now, you know them as Navy SEALs. But they actually got their combat, uh, baptism in combat in 1962 in Vietnam. I'll tell you another thing that happened in, in, in around the time of Vietnam. It's on 1953. It was the U.S. Army Special Forces Green Berets. And uh, it's, seen, it's seen the Green Berets. That's where Delta actually came out of. Uh, Delta Force actually came out of the Ranger Unit and Green Berets. You said, what's the point in this? I'm about to tell you. And it started in 1952. Also, something happened in, in the Vietnam War. There was something called LERP. Now, you don't know what that is. Most of you people call it Long Range Reconnaissance Patrol. And that is actually where the Ranger Battalion, 75th Ranger Battalion, and now the 101 Ranger Battalion, got their insemination. Now you say, now, Brother Tory, Ranger Battalion was in World War II. Yes, they was, but after World War II, and he identified that, they shut down Ranger as a combat unit mostly. It became mostly a training unit for leadership until LERP came along. LERP was a long-range reconnaissance patrol that the U.S. Army sent light infantry into an uh, in country in a communist country. Uh, as a matter of fact, the Green Berets that you know now, the Special Forces, were not anti terrorist units. What they was was a special operations unit that was designed to do one thing to go into a communist controlled regime and to train the indigenous people and to train them to fight the communist party. It was a part of the Cold War. Also out of that became what you call known as Marine Corps sniper teams, the two-man team. Because, because snipers only was there in World War II. When the Vietnam came about, they brought the snipers back, and that's where you see a lot. Now, what I want to try to get you to understand is the last one is Force Recon. Uh, the United States Marine Corps did not have a special operations unit. They were considered as an Army special operations unit. Okay? And, but Force Recon became the un- official Special Forces unit of the United States Marine Corps for years. 
Now he said, what's the point in that? In the midst of a corrupted war that John F. Kennedy was just a sorry person with, it, oh, by the way. He just was. I suggest you read a book called Richard Helms, The Man That Kept the Secrets. He was director of the CIA, became ambassador. I give my, my sister my mind. And uh, he will tell you a lot about John F. Kennedy that, you just, that a lot of people just don't know. I mean, anybody kills your own ally and they just don't like his ways, it's just, it's just real stupid anyway. I mean, in case you didn't, in case, in case you ever tell you, Kennedy was, was just such a great person. But uh, what I'm saying is, in, in all those times of a, of a complete war, a complete failure, and total immorale, five special operation units came out and became one of the most deadliest, feared, ferocious team that they ever saw. The Navy SEAL team was such feared by the Viet Cong that they put a, actually put a hit on, on several of their men. Uh, the, the Navy SEALs rang terror on the Viet Cong. Uh, that's where a lot of times, if you ever see a movie where they pick up, they move something, there's a grenade behind it, the Navy SEALs came up with that. I said nothing the Navy SEALs came up with, putting silencers on 22 caliber automatic weapons. They did. They were known as hush puppies. Because at the time, the Viet Cong had dogs to be their sentry. So what the Navy SEALs did, they, they, they came and they said, we got to have a way to kill these things without, without them hearing us. So they came up with Hush Puppy. It was a 22 caliber. Now, you know, almost every special forces, when, when they get their special forces badge, especially Delta Force, will give you a 22 caliber silencer pistol out of tradition. Well, so what are you getting at? It was a complete failure. But the U.S. military still raised up an army that to this day are famous. And we live in the last days. And some of you young people, I know sometimes you get discouraged. And see the onslaught. But if the U.S. military, mere human beings, can raise up an army, you mean to tell me God can't raise you up? You mean to tell me God can't do something with you? I'm not, I'm not preaching to, preaching to, to them older ones. They, they, they've made their decision. God burned my heart with this message for so long, and I fought it, and I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't know if I could do this thing in 30 minutes. I hope I can. But maybe there's somebody in this room right now, God maybe calls you to do something, calls you to preach. Yeah. Maybe, maybe there's a lady right now, you don't know if you could be that godly woman. Maybe there's a young person right now, I just don't know if I can stand for God in these last days. Maybe there's a person right now, I just know if I could just pass through that church the right way. I, I, I'm, let, let me tell you something after that man preached I really wanted to sit down but it wasn't with my daughter's son that saw God said you got to do what you got to do buddy and let me tell you something I remember when Jack Woods was dying of cancer and uh, I think it was uh, 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 um, 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 uh, Danny Foddy stood up there and he said I, I got to I got to do an impossible thing I have to feel that man's shoes and I got to you want to know something, young people? You need to figure this out right now. God's movement, God's war, God's battle, God's conflict don't stop with them. It only stops until that trumpet blows. And what I'm trying to get you to understand is we need a younger force that will stand up and say, I will be the next Danny Farley. I will be the next Sister Woods. We need that. I mean, it's, it's, it, I look, look, I, I look, like I say, I, 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 I look, you are looking at a complete, in a lot of ways, a complete loser. But you want to know something? When I got a hold of God, got a hold of me, God did something. Amen. And let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. We all point this out. If those men, you got to understand, some of those men, they joined the Navy SEAL, they were just normal people. When they joined the Green Beret, they were just normal people. When they joined the Red, they were just normal boys. They were just came out of farm. They didn't know nothing about nothing, yeah. but they trusted those drill instructors. Yeah. They trusted the program that turned them into fighting force to go in there and kill the enemy. Yeah. And you mean to tell me you can't trust the Holy God that created the universe? You can't trust the Holy God that created everything that he can't do with you. I challenge you to do this. What I challenge you to do is every time a prayer in the Old Testament was about to be made, most of the time, especially when God was about to say what he's going to do, 
The one thing God did first was remind that he was the creator of the universe. That's one thing he did. You know why he did that? To remind you of his power. The power to create. The power to change. The power to sometimes wreak havoc. The power to give life and the power to destroy. And he said, look, buddy, and you need to do this sometimes, young people. If, if God can't create a moon, if God can't create a planet, if God can't create a sun, if God can't create a monsoon, why can't he create you? Just why can't he? Amen. You say, you just don't know how weak I am. So is that ant. He can move a lot more than his size. Amen. Amen. I'm going to give you some real quick things. I'm, I'm suddenly going to sit down and get out the way. I wanna, first of all, I want to tell you why they made it. First of all, there was a volunteer army. Now, back in the 60s, they were still the draft. But to be a Navy SEAL, Green Beret, Ranger Battalion, you had a volunteer for it. You know what's wrong sometimes? Sometimes God ain't going to make you do nothing. You want to run, run. You want to quit, quit. You want to give in to the world, give in. I mean, I mean, that's one thing God ain't going to make you do. I mean, God may chase you for your sin, but God ain't going to make you do nothing. I had to tell you, man, God don't need you. God don't need me. He will replace you one way or another. You will lose out on your opportunity to do something for the creator of the universe. It's a volunteer army. I'll tell you another thing. I got to hurry to get this done. It's an army that found, that found strength in the inward resolve. What do you mean by that? You know, honestly, they, they tell you most of that training is psychological. That's, that's what they tell you. Is if you have the resolve to keep going even in the hard times. All right, in the Navy SEAL team, they tell you the only easy day was yesterday. They tell you that when they go in, the only easy day was yesterday. They tell you if you made it through yesterday, the day going to be a little bit harder. And Brother Danny spoke it right. The real man of God will tell you it ain't going to be all right all the time. It ain't going to be all right all the time. You will suffer some things. And bless God, I don't like to suffer, but I know it's needful. I mean, seriously, I, I like him. I've been, I've been, I look, I don't believe in long-term depression. I really don't. If you have a long-term depression, something wrong with you. Because last time I checked, you got the Holy Spirit inside of you. But my Savior did get weary and weary himself. My Savior did go to go right in that garden of Gethsemane and say, Lord, if that wouldn't pass it, we would just come for me. No, that's not my will, but thine be done. I tell you a difference. The baptism, you know, he never said baptism. The baptism, according to Romans chapter 6, is the death. That cup was the suffering and the wrath of God and the sin point in that man. He said, cup, if you ever, you ever just open like a Genesis chapter 15 there, he said the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. If you go out there in the book of Revelation, when God's about to pour his wrath, I mean, there's a time where God is saying, I've had enough of your sin, I'm about to pour it out back on you. And it pours out in the wrath of a holy God. And he said, Lord, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Those are some things he just didn't want to drink. I'm going to tell you something right now. You get, you get in this thing, there's something you ain't want to drink. You just ain't. But you need to drink it. They had a resolve, an inward resolve. They had a resolve of the Holy Spirit. I'm, I'm sorry. We had a resolve of the Holy Spirit of God. The Bible talks about in Ephesians chapter 3, I got to hurry up, about the strength of the, of the inward man. You know, God did not give you that Holy Spirit so you can preach and sing God gave the Holy Spirit to have his nature. Yes. God gave the Holy Spirit to have comfort. That's why I don't believe in long-term depression. And I believe some things will hurt you, and some things knock the wind out of you, and some things may even knock you down. But a just been fall seven times by the beginning, but the wicked should fall into mischief. I mean, the difference between, let me tell you something, I don't know much, but I know about fighting. And one thing I know, when you fight more sports, especially more than one person, you just don't stay down. I mean, you never stay down when you fight more than one person. Trust me, I know. I, I know what I'm talking about. I may not know how it is, but I know a little bit about fighting. And I did another thing. Always break their nose. No, for real. 
always break their nose. If you can't do nothing else, break their nose. Seriously. And it, trust me, it'll help you a whole lot better. Amen. Over there, the Bible says through desire. Desire may have separate and subsequent of the metal with all wisdom. You know what? Well, you want to separate yourself. You know, when they went to that training, they were totally separated from the outside world. You know that sometimes you cannot hang around everybody. You can't talk to everybody. I don't care how much you think it won't affect you. It will affect you. You know what? You got something. You got these morale killers. <laughs> they want to tell you everything is going bad. And it'll never get no better. And I mean, sometimes they, they tell you the truth. But dear Lord, just keep fighting. I say the next thing. Not only uh, that. I say another thing. They had a regard towards their command, their commander in chief in their country. Seriously, you know what you got to do? I'm telling you, a secret in life. First of all, they didn't, you know, it didn't matter if they voted for that president, they respected the office. But you know, you have a president of the United Universe of forever. You can respect him and the office. Then over there, I think of Hebrews, Hebrews there, it talks about that country and the opportunity to return. I mean, go to Hebrews chapter 11. Let's, let's look at that. Go, go to Hebrews chapter 11 there. Go to Hebrews chapter 11 there, please. Let's, let's look at Hebrews chapter 11. Amen. How am I doing on time? Because I don't know what I'm doing. How am I doing on time, brother? Help me out. Oh, no, that's it. Boy, I'm with Daniel. Uh, Hebrews chapter 11. I got to get done with this thing here. Hebrews chapter 11. Look at Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 14. For they said such things declare, uh, verse 14, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 14. For they said such things declare plainly that seek the country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, man, opportunity returned. But now desire a better country. That is a heavenly. Well, for God not ashamed to call their to be called their God, for you have prepared for them a city. I want to tell you something you need to do. I want to tell you you need to do this. Honestly, you need to do this. You need to pray, Lord, help me fall in love with you. Help me fall in love with heaven. Help me fall in love with those rewards. Seriously. I got this last one, then I'm done. I gotta get out this way here. Go to go to Second Timothy. Second Timothy, I don't want to go over my time here. Go to Second Timothy. Second Timothy here. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 4. Let's look at this soldier's ending. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 4 and look at verse 6. For I'm not ready to be offered in the time my departure is at hand. I fought a good fight. I said the next thing, that he had a definite enemy. Those special forces hated the enemy. Now, you know what? I, Brother Wood, you know, I love you. I really do have high regard for you. And now your wife here. But you know... And Brother Ellis is over there. Danny Ellis over there. Y'all may not like what I'm about to say. But I hope you don't, don't lose respect if you do. I understand. But sometimes, Brother Wood, I had to tell the devil to go to hell. Just go to hell. I don't like the devil. You don't understand. He's hurt my family. You don't understand. He's attacked my church. You just don't understand. You don't understand the hatred that I have for that for that slew foot dog eating scumbag of an evil wicked servant. You just don't understand. Me and him got something personal. I sure can't whoop him. And I ain't no mess for him. But I got a living savior that one day will burn me to make a fire. And bless God, I want to be there. I kick him in the head, stab him, break his neck, break his neck. See, you don't understand that. But you need to get to a place where you hate him that much. I'm sorry if that offends you, Sister Wood. But I'm just telling you, I'll tell you something else, brethren. I got to say this part. You'll never hate the devil to hate your own sin. Uh -huh. You know a lot of know, know why a lot of you ain't militant anymore. Yeah. It's because secretly you got some sin you don't hate. Yeah. You got something inside of you that you ain't hating yet. Yeah. And they tell you young people and some of you older people starting to hate your own stinking sin. Yeah. You can't hate sin till you hate your own sin first. Yeah. It will make you a hypocrite of all get out order. It will make you a hypocrite, a Pharisee that love your sin and embellish your sin and lust over your sin while you're sitting there trying to attack somebody else's sin. And that 
is what's wrong with a lot of young people. Why they can't be melted anymore? Because you like sin. And you'll never hate the devil. Let me tell you something. You have no idea the pain and the destruction he'll cause your home. You have no idea what he'll do to your family. You have no idea how he'll trick your loved ones. You have no idea what that evil, scum-sucking, scumbag of a stinking snake will do. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just saying I don't like him. I really don't like that scum sucking. Seriously. I really don't. I done learned that in life. He don't do me no good. He has used me, tricked me, got me into some stuff I ain't got no business being in. And then laughed at me when I tried to get out of it. And I'll tell you something else, brethren. I'm going to tell you something else. I'm almost done. But you spend more time on the internet shooting at each other. It's because you ain't mad at the devil. Yeah, I said it. What you going to do about it? You spend more time on the internet. Hey, well, 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 I can't believe it. Well, he can't. Look at what he said. And that devil see me. Ha, 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 ha. They so stupid. You know what I learned about a gang? We can't fight each other with somebody trying to kill us. Why some of you spend more time mad at everybody else? Spend more time on the internet fighting everybody else because you ain't in the battle you think you in. Hey, buddy, I, I may not, I may not like all the brethren, but they ain't my enemy. Yeah. 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 The last thing, the last thing I got to say about those soldiers, they were trained just to keep fighting to the very end. Yeah. And verse seven, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I have kept the faith. Hence was laid up for me a crown of righteousness, the Lord, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give. At that day, not only, not to me only, but unto all those that love his appearing. There's a true story of a Navy SEAL operation in Afghanistan. And they got, the helicopter got hit. The helicopter tipped it out. And it just, the Navy SEAL fell on the ground. He did a roll, came up and started shooting. He wasn't going to win that fight. He just kept shooting. You know what you need to do, preachers? You just need to keep shooting. Just... Go out with a bang. Don't stop shooting.